Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, the four corners of this room, the fight starts now! So close. Hello and welcome to Before the Bell in Manchester for a great night of boxing. First up is Welshman Brandon Scott, so I'll hand over to our MC for the evening, Mr. David Diamante. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome everybody here to the wonderful city of Manchester here in England. We are in the AO Arena for a big night of World Championship Professional Boxing. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, Everlast, and Forged Irish Stout. We begin tonight with a six-round super bantamweight affair. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Ian Metcalf. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell, from Fleetwood, scoring A-star referee, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, and now ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, six, and gentlemen, six, six rounds, rounds of boxing scheduled, scheduled in the Super, super Bantamweight Bantam division. division. Introducing, Introducing first, first, fighting out of fighting the, out red, the red, corner, red corner, he wears, he wears the, the Argentinian, Argentinian blue and, and white. white. He scales eight, eight stone, 13, 13 pounds, pounds, eight ounces. ounces. Professional, Professional record, record five, five wins, wins five, five defeats, defeats with, two, with draws. two draws. He fights, he fights out of out Buenos, Buenos Aires, Aires Argentina. Argentina. Here is, Here is Rodrigo, Rodrigo Pinino Areco. Areco. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the pink and black. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, bang on. His professional record thus far perfect. Six fights, six victories, with one of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Swansea, Wales, known as the BNOP, the baddest nerd on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Boom Boom Scott. Scott. Okay, boys, if a call break, take one step back. Rodrigo, Sidigo, break, un paso atrás, okay? No punches around the back of the head. No goal, pez de la parte, atrás de la cabeza, okay? Talking glances, talk to jobs. Good luck, lads. Seconds out, round one. Well, here we go into the first round of the first fight here on Before the Belt. Welcome everybody watching. Busy, busy night, stacked card here in Manchester's AO Arena. Very busy on Before the Belt as well. Four fights. First up, Brandon Scott, the flashy Welshman, boxing nicely on the back foot there. Just creeping forward now. It's a nice counter, right hand, left hook. I'm joined, as always, by the second best looking bald man in Wales, Barry Jones. And the legend that is Craig Riches. How you doing, gents? Starting nice and sharp, Brandon. Very smooth, relaxed. That's got a little bit too close there, didn't he? Got him to work behind that jab there, Scott. Ah, nice left hook from Scott. I think he has Craig. Go on. He's got very good timing. He has. His timing is works very well. Yeah, we see him. Spider-Man, 
Actually, he wasn't. It was Sonny Edwards who was Spider-Man. But we've seen him as Spider-Man in the past. We've seen him as Forrest Gump. But he's a very good fighter. And I think he wants people to know just how good he is. Quick hands. He's intelligent. I think he announced himself to many when he fought the tough Nicaraguan Ronaldo Cahino in the undercard of Cordina Rakamov. Looks very, very good that night. Yeah, he's a very good character. I've seen him in um, different costumes, different um, things he's come out with, different little tricks, and it's an entertainment business, so it's good to see him bring his personality to boxing. Yeah, he's been out for a little while. He had a hand injury after his last fight on the AJ Hellanius built. But looking to bounce back. He's ready. He says the hand's good. He's in good physical shape and looking good, Barry. Yeah, he's just loading up a little bit, I think. You know, again, that eagerness to want to be impressive, but just... We'll just take your time a little bit. We'll be on the jab, go through those, you know, go through the stages of attacks. Rather just look at the jump in, that's better. The, the fainter way in or jab away in. We get get closer a little bit more intelligently than he has in the last sort of minute or so. Yeah, looking, looking to slip inside. And throw that left to the body. Good feet. Oh, sharp jab. Nice right hand though. From Mareko. Just on the top of the head. Of Brandon Scott. Corners, 10 seconds. The familiar face of Sonny Edwards there, as we mentioned in the first round, dressed up as Spider-Man at the press conference. He announced seconds Brandon out. Scott there. Round two. Sonny Edwards will be co-managing Scott alongside Lee Eaton. Very knowledgeable. Man is Sonny, knows his boxing. His main corner man, Gavin, Gavin Rees, former world champion. Someone you know well, I'm sure, Barry. No, I never met him, mate, to be honest. By the way, he he's the first, <laughs> he's the best looking man in he's, Wales. He's the best, yeah. bo the, the first bowl. <laughs> is that what, what I'm trying to say? Uh, Gavin was a fantastic fight, it really was. Yeah, demonstrating them fast hands again. Areca, though, he fancies this, coming to fight, letting his hands go. Yeah, he's definitely made him more of an imposing start in the second round. He's came out to give it a go. The first round is a bit tentative, letting his hands go in the first round, but the second round, he. He started, you know, picking up the pace a little bit. This, bit more. this is Scott's first six-rounder. Started, like you say, Craig, decent pace. Letting his hands go. You've got to work on that semicircle there, Scott. We talk about it all the time, but you know, going back a little bit in straight lines here. So he's coming forward, and then when, he, when he's retreating, he's going back in straight lines. That allows the record there just to step forward, steal that space a bit, and do a little bit of this. If you do that, take a half a step back, and then pivot left or pivot right, using a semicircle on the body. You're close enough to fire again, but still in a, in a relatively safe position you know, when it comes to defence. Lovely jab to the body. It was a nice right hook as well. Landed low. Good variation with that jab. Yeah, he's working well to the body. As you said, he threw a nice little uppercut right hand and a jab downstairs. He's going up and down, varying his attacks. See, that's a chance for him to throw the shot. There it is, Daz. He did it that time. Yeah, it was lovely. Working that right hand well. We're just stepping out of range and landing the shot over the sometimes lazy lead hand of Areco. Just let this crack a little bit lower, so especially when he, go, when he comes forward. Just you know, bend your legs a little bit. Just slide forward. Just stay in a little bit of a lower position. I mean, just, you can explode into your, your punches a little bit more effectively. There you can see really good fundamentals from Brandon Scott. He had a decent amateur pedigree on the Welsh novices, represented Wales a few times. Oh, it's a nice slip beautiful. outside, beautiful shot, wasn't it, Craig? Yeah, 
He's got a very good variety of punches he has. You can see he's well scored. The speed of shot as well, which is so impressive for me. He really lets it go. Fast reactions, haven't he? You see the gap explode straight away. Looks like there's a little bit of swelling under the left eye of Scott. Nothing to worry about. It's a little nick. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round three. Into round three we go. And a reminder, this is the first sixth rounder for Brandon Scott. Looking good so far, Craig. Yeah, I think he's looking brilliant. I think that as um, the Surin hit, well, a perfect fullback right hand. That's the skills we were talking about earlier. The var var variety is brilliant from him. It's a lovely right hand. Perfect a little there. It's that little feint. Just he's not using the jab as much as maybe I would like, and I'll just create the opportunity. Oh, it's a lovely right hand. Beautiful shot again. The right hand, left hook. And this is what I like about Scott. Yeah, he, he wants to impress. He's working downstairs. Good variation. Beautiful well, I think we said this before, Barry. We don't mind it when a fighter is a little over ego. Yeah, you sure. want him to impress, you want him to look good, and you'd rather have to contain that than go looking for it. Yeah, he's just, he's just standing up now. Just, you know, when he explodes, he looks really impressive, but just making those opportunities, creating them rather than waiting for oh, it. Oh, beautiful uppercut as well. Yeah, he's in his groove here. Looking good, relaxed. Looks like he's enjoying himself. I think he's getting to his sense of rhythm now. He's getting to his rhythm, he's enjoying himself, he's allowing himself to get his hands hands going. I think he's getting his timing. You know, when you get your sense of rhythm, your timing and start, he starts letting his hands go now. Yeah, like we say, he's been out the ring a few months. AJ Hellenia seems an age ago. So that surgery, so like you say, it takes a little while to get that timing, get that distance back. And we're seeing it with Scott now in full flow, looking good against Areco, who, I must say, you're only as good as your last fight, and his last two have been victories. He's fought eight times, numerous occasions, so has that edge in experience. Oh, yeah, but looking good. Slot another little right hand up under the elbow there. Again, when you see those little jabs, they just need to dip down to the body. And that little occasion there, Scott. Great head movement as well. You see the slips inside and outside. And he's fainting that jab now and coming with the left hook. He, He's manipulating these opponents' hands wherever he wants them, really. There you go, beautiful, beautiful uppercut. shot, there lovely you go. shot. And again. As you say, Craig, really, really well-timed. Slips on the outside, he's happy to slip inside, work to the body, has been impressive. Beautiful. He really is a good operator, Brandon. It's impressive his variety, to be honest. Jab downstairs again. And there's always an added pressure, I guess, when you are a bit of a showman and you want to talk and you want to have a bit of a laugh. You've got to back it up in the ring, and we're seeing that. Nice jab, though, from Areco. Some damage from the nose of Scott. Oh, there we go again. Really good shot. Yeah, he's got a little bit of mark on the iron nose now. If he can just, if he can just learn to just get a little bit more of a turn on that shot, because he's he's doing it from like a, a lean back position, he gets much more purchase on the punch. Yeah. Yeah, boxing nicely. Nice see Just looking at Scott there in the corner. He has a little bit of damage around that nose under the left thigh. It usually happens when you've been out the ring for a little while. Your face forgets what it's like to get hit with shots with the little the little gloves on. <laughs> And also, I just think, you know, with, with he, that, that, that round, he got hit the less, I thought, because he was fainting more. You know, and, and you, you do that. You, sometimes you've got to sort of jab like you did there to miss, 
to allow the other guy to throw to the gaps to appear for you to land your more con your more impressive shots. Oh. See it there, it's a lovely bit of work there. It's a little lean back, little turn of the shoulder, coming through with that right hand. And he followed up with a left hook as well, which was quite impressive. And that's been the puncher, hasn't it, Adam? He's used that three or four times in that round, a little Corners, dip of the shoulder, bending over that, that right knee and throwing that up, a cut right through the middle. Seconds out, round four. Well, round four of this six rounder, Brandon Scott in the black and pink shorts, looking for that right hand over the jab again. His opponent, Rodrigo Areco from Argentina, in second best here. He's been game, he's been trying to force the pace at times, but it's just that. Oh, hand speed, and you can see again. the difference of hand speed from Scott there. Just looking for that right uppercut and the left hook. Looking good, looking switched on and focused, Barry. I was thinking, he's done some lovely shots, but nothing's hurt the record. That was the first time I've seen him hit back on his heels there. Yeah. I think, I think as you said, uh, Dow, the, the speed is the difference in this fight. Areco's uh, tough and he can clearly punch. He's marking him up every time he lands, but it's just the speed of Brandon's able to beat him to the punch every time, and that's what's winning in this fight. Yeah, he's enjoying himself in there. He's in a fight for sure, Reco. Look, he's trying to creep forward. He's trying to land shots, but it's completely second best here. And you're seeing the good variation with movement. Now on the back foot, Scott, but looking comfortable. Oh, he landed that flush. Beautiful shot. Again, that was a hand oh, he got caught one of his own. Landed a good shot there, Areco. <laughs> Just a reminder, can't get carried away. Can't get lazy or complacent. It was a good shot, but before that, it was a beautiful shot from Scott. Record just letting him know I'm still in the fight and I'm still here. He needs, he needs to go again here, though, Scott, just to show a record that he's, that he's OK. That's not too much of an effect on him. 12 fights, a record. This is his first team. He's been defeated five times, but only stopped once, so he's tough. He's showing that in there this evening. I think Brendan's got the right idea, going down to the body constantly as well. It's a, it's a good idea of him, a man who's tough like him, got a breaking down over the time and over the rounds. He likes that right hand over that jab, Scott. Yeah, I think he's letting us know what he's been working on in training. Well, when he relaxes a little bit, I know he's trying to be aggressive, but when he relaxes a little bit more, he has that more, he has fluency to his work. He can do that, can he? He'll just react quicker. To any mistake that a record makes. Come shield, just misplaced from Scott. He's looking good. Perhaps moving a little too much. We'd like to see him plant his feet a little bit more when he lets the shots go. Yeah, I think so. But there's always a danger, isn't there? Because he, because, because he's not really, you know, really hurting the record. Record's always looking to fire back. So again, I, I go back to that semicircle around the body. That, that's your way forward, or to maintain that pit, that pressure. And he's a lot better when he does relax. He flows a lot better. I think he picks his shots better. He relaxes. He sees things more. His timing's better. I think he's just got to go back to relaxing and boxing and just picking his shots. Fair play to a record. He's really, really having a go. He's taking some big shots, sharp, crisp counters from Scott. But he's really, really on the front foot here, trying to land big shots of his own. So lovely again, that uppercut has been the punch of the fight for him, hasn't it? There, Scott, that little little dip with the uppercut. And then go caught with the left hook there, you know, one of those rare occasions where he just held his feet a little bit too long and a record beat him to the punch, which was a rarity. But it's a good performance from Scott so far. He's trying to be aggressive, trying to be impressive. Getting caught now and again, as you're going to be when you're looking to come forward. But when he, as, as, as Craig was saying, when he relaxes, he's got a better flow to and better rhythm to his work, and he looks uh, a better fighter for it. He just looks hard Corners there. Some, 10 seconds. Some deep breaths from Areco, but yeah, he's a tough fighter, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Seconds out. We were saying, you've got to work your strength sometimes, and Brendan's strength, as we were saying, is just flowing and boxing. Areco's a tough man. He's a solid man. You don't want to mix up too much with him. You've got to pick your shots perfectly. Just darted straight out to the centre of the ring, Scott. He's been pushed back now, but I 
thought for a second we might see a bit more aggression from Scott in this fifth round. Had a really good scrap for Reco with Marino Botello in July 2022. He was 4-0 then, Botello. It was a draw, it was a really good fight. Everton flowed went one way, went the other. He's gone on now to, to eight and oh, Botello. So he can cause a shock now and again. Yeah, he looks like the more the fight's going on, he's warming into the fight as well. And he's believing himself a bit more. I think he's um, taken Brandon's power, um, realised he can handle the power. And now he's pressing on to try and put a dent in him himself. Trying to ping out the jab, Scott. Yeah, something that's been lacking, isn't it? I, I feel. I think that for the first round, he's been peppering him with the jab all the time. It's the range finder, he'll, he'll, he might encourage the Greco to throw from too far out so you can land your that's, that quick right hand counter. Yeah, you mentioned the word faint, I think, early on in this contest, and he's neglected that a little bit, I think, as well. Not drawn out the lead as much yeah. from a Reco. I agree with you, Darren. I think if he fainted a lot more, that he would make his uh, night a lot easier. I think um, you can't just stand and invite the pressure in with a fight like this. I've just gone halfway in this fifth round. These these are valuable rounds, though. I'm sure you'll agree for Scott, gents. Been out the ring a little bit. Want to get that timing, get that distance. Again, I have to give lots of credit here to Areco plowing forward. Yeah. It's just oh, looking for that right uppercut again. There was a, a right hand as well from Areco, but it has, and we've mentioned this, Craig, just that lack of hand speed from Areco. Yeah, 100%. If he had the hand speed, he would, he would land a, a lot more, but it's Brandon's time and credit to him as well. He's got great timing and he's taken advantage of that. Yeah, still a young man, Scott. Lots of maturing still to do. So in time, once that develops, you can see bundles of skill, bundles of talent. Good work again from a record. A little short left hook inside. Yeah, he just needs, needs a little breather here, doesn't he? Scott, all the, all the learning curve for him. And a Greco sensing, and that's why he's put all the pressure on second half of this round. Yeah, brute force pressure from a record. Not giving him room to breathe at all. You can see Brandon, Brandon's feeling the pace of the fight. You can see he's pressing him and he's taking him out of his comfort zone. But that's what these fights are for. They're for that. So, you know, you react to different situations, cuts and welts in your eyes. And, you know, and also when you're hitting guys with punches, they don't move, which I'm an expert of. But, and also, you know, and, and, got, and that as well, when the guy puts the pressure on you, start to tie it in, in a round, how to manage that round, how to stay safe, but also try and win it. So, you know, all these things are learning curves, and, and that's why you get pulls like this with, with you know, with 50 50 records. You get the journeyman to, to give you rounds, you get these guys to give you different problems in rounds, and, and that's what makes you a better fighter when you get to that level, hopefully, fighting for some sort of time. Well, he'll learn loads from this, he'll learn loads from this, he'll learn bundles. There's no point when you go in there sometimes, you're blowing opponents out in one or two rounds, you learn nothing from it. Fighters like this will have time to go back to the drawing board round. and work on the gym, even taking rounds off in um, certain times in tough fights like this. Yeah, and it has been a tough fight into the sixth round, valuable rounds, as they both say. Here at ringside for Brandon Scott. He's showing us some, some real skill, Barry. Yeah, you know, he's boxed fine, he's boxed well. You know, you're always looking, you're always being, you're being, it sounds critical, you're always looking for him to do a little bit more and a little bit better. And you want to see the, those constant improvements, but he, he's boxed well, you know, he's, he's won almost everything in the contest. But he's had a few little situations where it's been uncomfortable for him. He, he had facial damage quite early on, so he's had to, de to deal with that as well. So it's a. Uh, Yes, he'll be happy with the, the, the he'll be disappointed with the performance because that's the, the way all fighters are. But I think the corners team overall will be happy. Yeah, and again that jab, I agree with you, Barry. Just neglected it a little bit. He has a lot of success. He draws out the lead of Areco as well, and with the speed that he carries, good that's time. good work good from a car and left foot. Yeah, it was, but bouncing off the chin of Areco, and Pat comes the Argentinian with big shots of his own. He really 
Looking stuck. to get stuck in here. Yeah, he fancies it. I think it's because now he's understood that he can take his punch power. He's getting so much more confident. But over time, Brandon mature. He's still young, and when he matures and gets his man strength, these sort of problems he may not have to face in the future. But that's not a good look, though. That welt is now that swelling of the eyes opened up to a cut now. I don't know how bad it is, but that might just um, delay his career a little bit further, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that is a nightmare, as you say, Barry, because after this, what you'd want to do after a few months out is get straight back in there, be active, and now this is going to slow him down again. And hopefully it's not too bad. This is good work, though, from Areco. He's having to grip down, Brandon's having to grip down. Areco's coming along very strong. That punishing is, to the body yeah, back. Showing real maturity, 29 years old is Areco. He's showing that real man strength in there, really bullying Scott now. Yeah, he's going to have to hold it together now, Scott. He's going to have to hold it together. Yeah, he's got 70 seconds to do that, Craig. But this is where you use your speed now. You, you know, you've got to use your speed in your footwork, like he's, like he's trying to do. Don't put too much weight in your shots. Flurry and spin. Yeah, Areco just doesn't seem to respect his punch power. And this this is good work from Areco. Sorry, Craig. Both exchanging left hooks inside. Oh, and again, Areco really fancying this. This is good work from the Argentinian. 45 seconds left of this contest. Yeah, he's in a bit of a hole here, Brendan. He's going to have to dig himself out. Areco's grinding him down. Like he's showing tremendous heart, Brendan, fighting back and firing back. He does look tired in there. So again, it is his first six rounder, Barry. Yeah, you know, and, and again, it's all a learning curve, and, and, he, and he felt the pace in the last couple of rounds. But also, I think a has put the pressure on the last couple of rounds as well, but you know, he hasn't been seriously hurt, you know, either Scott, so the pressure is, is tough for him, but he's not been hurt. Oh. Yeah. He's, to, uh, he's earned his money tonight. Well, a really good opening contest here on Before the Bell. Brandon Scott versus Areco. Rodrigo Areco from Argentina. A fight of two halves, you could say. Blitzed the first half. Brandon Scott looked very good, very sharp, flashy, and very happy to be back in there. But Areco really closing the show in style, showing that real physical strength, power, and willingness to win a half and half record from Areco. But he finished strong, didn't he, Barry? No, he finished tremendously strong. And, and I think it was, it was a point that he should, probably should have pulled the trigger earlier because there was nothing. All those good punches that, that Scott landed throughout that contest, there's nothing really hurt to Reco, and maybe he should have maybe started to push the pace a little bit, 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 bit earlier in the contest, but he made Scott work, especially his last two rounds, made a really tough tough night there for Scott. But I do think the skills, the speed, and, and you know, some of the shot, shot selection from Scott was enough to get him over the line, but you know, for sure. But it's, it's, a, it's a good learning fight. That's the fight that... Uh, uh, as Craig was saying, that's the fight you need, you know, to de develop your career. Yeah, he'll learn. He'll learn loads from that. He'll learn bundles from that, and he'll go back to the gym and he'll have loads to work on and go to the drawing board. And now, when he's focused on his next fight and he's training, he'll be thinking about tonight. And Craig, there's a lot to work with as well. Good fighter. Yeah, hundred percent. His skill-wise, um, it was brilliant. His timing, his skills, his fundamentals, it's all there. It's just experience. He will learn that over time, and today will be the valuable experience that he needs. And I'll tell you what, Areco's going to give some of these youngsters in the future some very, very tough fights. Well, I can see David Diamante, our MC, for the evening in the centre of the ring. He's ready with the verdict of this first contest here on Before the Bell. So let's hand over to the MC for that verdict. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a nice round of applause out here for both of these two game warriors. After six rounds here in Manchester, we go to referee Steve Gray's scorecard. It reads 58-56 for your winner. He's still undefeated, the BNOP, Brandon Boom Boom Scott. Well, Brandon Scott gets the victory in a tough fight against the Argentinian Rodrigo Areco. Tough as they come. Really, really tough. You see Scott, he'd be thrilled. Hopefully that nick under the left eye isn't too bad. He'll want to get straight back out. Like we say, he has been out the ring for a little while with a hand injury. Hopefully the hand's held up and he's fine. There was a lot of movement. He did just look at the hand there. I'm not too sure. 
if there is any reoccurring problems. I hope not. Love to see him back out. There's the team, like we say. Train by Gavin Rees, former world champion now. Managed by Sonny Edwards, former world champion, and Lee Eaton. The rest of the crew there. All smiles. Ladies and gentlemen, we got two former world champions in the ring here, Gavin Reese and Sonny Edwards. Give them a nice round of applause. Well, there is the AO Arena. We'll have some noisy spectators in here later on for sure. What main event we have in store for you. Jordan Gill versus Zelfa Barrett. But we are ready for the second contest here on Before the Bell. So let's hand back over to David Diamante. And now entering the arena, please welcome the undefeated young man, Cunian William Kralla. Here is William Crawler, son, uh, sorry, son, brother of uh, Mancunian legend, Anthony Crawler. Looked very good of late, William Crawler. Was always going to be a work in progress, but now four fights, four wins. His last three all coming inside the distance. And it's been the rate of improvement that's been so impressive. A different style of fighter to his brother but with the rate that he's improving the team that he has behind him the future could be very bright for William Collar ladies and gentlemen from the AO arena here in Manchester we're set to go with the next bout of the evening and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing was sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, Everlast, and Forged Irish Stout. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Liverpool scoring A star referee, Mr. Mark Lyson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. Introducing first, Fighting out of the red corner, he wears the black and gold. He scaled 10 stone, 12 pounds, 9 ounces. Professional record, 4 victories against 9 defeats. He has one win coming by way of knockout. Combattimento Fuori Latino, Lazio Italia. Please welcome Fabio, the Major Cascone. Cascone. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the green with white and black trim. He scaled 10 stone, 11 pounds, one ounce. His young professional record thus far perfect. Three fights, three victories, with two of his three wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Manchester, England, William Crawler. Crawler. Okay, boys, both know the rules. I want you to obey my commands, tell you to break, break clean, defend yourselves at all times, boys. Good luck to you both. Seconds out, round one. Well, William Crawler in the blue corner, Cascone in the red corner from Italy in the, like I say a rapidly improving William Crawler a natural switch here's her fighting out the southpaw stance I think that's his more natural stance but loves to box on the front foot and landing a lovely left uppercut early on in this contest what he does so well Carl, he turns into every shot he turns on the hips and the shoulders so every every shot doesn't mean is correct he almost commits to every punch he throws yeah, he does. He really commits to the shot. 
You've been impressed with William Crawler, Craig? Yeah, I'm very impressed with him. He's, he's picking his shots very well as well. He's not wasting anything. He's not frying for the sake of it. He knows everything he's doing. He's quite composed, but, you know, it's in the family, it's in the blood. I'm sure he's got a lot of pressure tonight, but he's doing well under the pressure. He's getting his tempo shots here, Cascone. Oh, beautiful. Oh, oh. He's, hurt. he's gone down, Cascone, Two, early three, in this first four, round. Five, six, seven, eight. Picks I don't know if he's going to make nine. the count here. Another wow. early wow. finish from William Crawler. He didn't waste anything. He, he did not Ooh. waste anything at all there. Wasted no time. And like I say, the rate of improvement. Wow. Wow, very impressive. From this young man is very impressive, Barry. Very impressive. That, that, well, that's, that's a, a learned technique, that is. That's a tap tap. So you, you, so you get that natural dip. You, you, you bring your right sh shoulder almost to your left knee. So you get that proper turn in your punch. I said he turns it to every shot. A left hook to the body, left hook to the head. But the body shot did him. But either way, if that doesn't do you, it drops the elbow for the for the left hook to the head to hit the tiger clean. But the body shot did him. A little, re a little delayed reaction. Just only goes down and he's done. Yeah, usually durable. Cascone there. Only been stopped once in nine defeats. But absolutely blitz there. Well, like you said, Barry, he turns into every shot. He's looking to impress, looking to put on a show. And again, the, the, the improvements shown have been so impressive. Let's have a look at this finish again. There you go. Like you say, Barry, the drop to the body with the left hand, followed back upstairs with that left hook. Beautiful work. You see, he always uses the right hand as a measure to, to help him give that little turn on the body. And it's not a massive, over-exaggerated turn. He just he touches with the right hand almost. A little turn, bam, bam. But that left hook, because of the angle, because he turns, because he t when you turn that right shoulder, it dips the left shoulder down. It gives you that angle to lift the diaphragm with the left hook. It's the way he sets his feet. It. He sets his feet so beautiful before he threw the shots as well. He was all in position every time. But it was three stoppages in a row. Make that four now for William Crawler. Said to me earlier on in the week that he wants an area title before the end of the year. And the rate that he's improving, I've no doubt he's got that in his locker. But the fighters are in the centre ring. So is our MC, Mr. David Diamantis. So let's hand over to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Lyson calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 1 minute and 11 seconds of round number one, declaring your winner by knockout. He's still undefeated. He's now 5-0 and oh as a professional, William Crawler. Yeah, William Crawler goes to 6-0, and oh, 5 stoppages, and that really was a good knockout, that lovely body shot you see the delayed reaction from Cascone wanted no more I don't even think it was a case of wanting no more he couldn't have no more he was completely left empty of any oxygen there it was a beautiful left to the body and there they are the Quarter brothers smiles all round rightly so it was a very very you can't even judge it I guess as far as performance wise I mean the, the the win was spot on the ending was spot on but we just we want to see more but I think you can because you know again his technique is, is absolutely fantastic he commits to every shot as, as Craig said he's getting his, fit, his feet in the right position to get the purchase with the speed without, without losing anything so he's not losing any speed but still getting weight inside the shots because he's, he's making that that turn that we all taught for as young and we all forget from the hips and the shoulders every time. For a, for a professional early in his career, he just it was so composed. He wasn't like falling off balance because he was over enthusiastic, trying too hard. It was just it was a perfect performance. It really was spot on, and fantastic and, and, finish. Darren, the sign of a good fighter, a potentially a really good fighter, is you never rush your work, but you get him out there early. And that was the prime example of that. Yeah, you don't get paid for overtime in this sport. And yeah, people want to see knockouts. They want to see dramatic finishes. And William Crawler makes his way down to ringside to uh, have a chat with our reporter for the evening, Mr. Jamie Ward, who's alongside promoter Eddie Hearn and brother Andy Crawler. Well, Will Crawler, congratulations. 
from the man who made his professional debut in this ring 11 months ago to now after watching that first round stoppage, how pleased can you be with the strides forward you've taken in that time? Well, that's all what my debuts ago, just like that. But um, nah, I felt great. And I said in the press conference the other day, you'll see a complete different fighter in there tonight. And I believe he did. And if this man don't want me now, I don't know what more I've got to do for him. So I thought we already yeah. had you. <laughs> well, we wanted to see a bit more of you under the lights tonight. And I'm sure you probably would have really liked to get more time in as well. But talk us through the finish, because that was brilliant. No, I always felt someone with a style like him, high hands, plods forward, it suits me. And he went points from all the good GB lads. And I think it's a great statement stopping him in the first round. And I'm really happy with it. And one thing is for sure, you've said from the start, William, you're under no illusion that being this man's younger brother has helped you getting this opportunity on the big stage, but in what way do you believe you're going out about proving you belong here? Now nah, I do believe that. I said my second name is away in the door and I believe I blew it off and I, I'm going to stay here. Well, let's grab a word with older brother, Anthony Crawler. Anthony, a busy night for you tonight, but yeah. potentially a very special one. Obviously, Rhiannon and Dixon in world title action later tonight. Not off to a bad start there, though. No, not a bad start at all. And in the last... Um... I said then, you know, 11 months ago he made his debut here and the improvement in him has been massive and he works so hard and um, he's dedicated his life to boxing now and it's opportunities like this, what he's worked for, shining under the lights and that's what he's done tonight. It's a nice little statement, that. Well, let's bring in promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, at the press conference you said, you know what, Will Crawl is a dark horse. <laughs> Why are you a fan of this young man? Uh, do you know what, I just, I just feel that... I just feel that, you know, the, the progress that he's made since the debut has been incredible. He came in... Look, like what he was, he was a novice. He hadn't boxed for a while in the amateur code, but I was a bit worried in there tonight because he seemed to be loading up a little bit. And when you start believing in your power, sometimes it can be a little bit dangerous. But he, he believed in his power and it worked. As he said, that guy's been the distance with some good GB fighters. He's 15 fights without being stopped. And he destroyed him in, what, a minute in there tonight? I think um, we've got a big future ahead. I thought we'd already signed him, to be honest with you. So I just said to the lads, pull your finger out and go and get it done backstage because he's a real prospect now. You know, it's not just about a nice story. I think this guy's really coming on. I think, you know, you start looking at it now and, and start thinking about moving somewhere towards English title level in nine or 12 months. And I think he's going to be really popular when he's fighting British titles. And how refreshing to have an entertaining crawler. You know, I mean, when it was Ant, it was just, you know, it was really neat off the jab, wasn't it, Ant? And then, you know, oh, they didn't like that here. He's, he's a legend around these parts. But he's a different type of, of fighter to his brother. You know, he's got bad intentions, and I like it. I think he's going to be really, really exciting. And uh, one win down for Ant, but for William, let's get the... Uh, the ink dry and, and start moving him now and really planning the future. We, we need rounds, that's for sure, because you can't just keep going in there and demolishing people in a round. You need to develop as a fighter, but very exciting. When you're heavy-handed like that, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, Will, final one from you. You heard it here first. I know that's brought a big, big smile to your face, but now the plan, I'm sure, get backstage, get showers, sit ringside, and hopefully watch your friend and stable mate, Rhiannon Dixon, become world champion. No, yeah, I can't wait for it. Um, no one deserves it more than her. Uh, see how she trains in the gym, the work she puts in, and uh, she'll be the new world champion tonight. Will Crawler, five and zero, onwards and upwards. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, Anthony, as well. Bit of a handshake there. <laughs> well done. Boom. Absolutely fantastic technique there, wasn't it? Just it's, it's, it's like a tap tap with power. <laughs> but it really is. Dude. Just here, again, just see the, the rotation. As, as Craig said, the foot, foot's in the right place. He takes that up, up, upwards with that left hook to the body. And then if that, if that one's going to do the job, the left hook to the head was going to put him in position to throw that right hand. So he didn't need it. Great shot, great finish. And I think they're right. You know, We have someone here who, who potentially is a really good prospect. I mentioned their area title by the end of the year. It's just about experience now, Barry, isn't it? Getting the rounds, that was his first six-rounder. We got about, what was that, a minute and a half of it. But it's just rounds now for William Crawler if he wants to get to that level. But, but all you can do is match him that way, where, where the guy who should give you rounds. And if he don't give you rounds, then that, that's just that's a testament of how good you are, how powerful you are. You have to match him in that way where you've got, you know, ideally you're going to want to box a tall guy, a short guy, a strong guy, a fast guy, everything you can get. So when you come against someone who can do it all, you've experienced that in the ring. But when you have a good amateur career like you did and, 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 and you know, we all had, then you can bypass some of those, those stages. But when you haven't, you have to get it all right. And so it's getting the development fights with, with also a view to itch, inching towards the title as quick as you possibly can without going too fast. Matchmaking is the worst job in the world. It's the hardest job in the world. If you get it right, then, the, well, you don't get no credit because he's just a talented kid. If you get it wrong, it's all on you. you do do you get him in there with someone like Cascone again? 
a similar a guy, maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe he was somebody who's more heavy-handed than, than Cascone, or maybe a guy who's physically stronger. I see what he's like, he's a guy who's tall and fleety, who can really, who can, who can, you know, smother his work so he can't get his punches off and he's got to he's got to you know not get frustrated all those things are no, and you know that you need all them for when you go in those long distance fights when things are not working for you and you have to adapt great like you said um, once you start um, taking them steps forward you can't go backwards again so you need to learn all the experience now before you get to the area title levels British title levels because after you're there there's no going back to learn again so yeah it's important and, and I guess a question for both of you with the name that he has there's a potential huge following waiting for William Crawler. Yeah, that is, I think the name helps him. It doesn't hinder him at all. I think when you've got like a, a Eubank name or a Ben name, because well, Chris Andy Crawler is a legend of the, about a British boxer, I understand that, but they're superstars, the, the Bens and the Eubanks. They transcended not just boxing, but sport. So they put a different pressure all together. But the Crawler name gets him a platform to, to, to show his ability without that outside pressure outside of the boxing world. So I think it can only help him and he has his, he has his brother with him who's a really good trainer a really good boxing brain has been at every level by the way let's not forget Andy Collar so he there was a guy who, who looked like he wasn't going to get past domestic level but through knowing what it takes to, to break through that barrier to get to British then world level that's invaluable experience in the corner and and because he's your brother as well you know he's only going to steer you in the right direction for nothing but love and I guess, talking about Anthony as well, he's showing how good of a coach he is now. Like you say, Barry, because the rate of which William is improving is testament to his coaching style, I guess, and, and methods. You know he's good as your fighter. That's the truth. I always say that. That's true. But a, but a good coach is worth his weight in gold. Can be the difference between winning and losing a fight, being a world champion or not, or being nothing. That's the truth. But you have to have the ability. But a good coach will hone it in the right way and you do the right things at the right time. And I think Andy Crawler, that he's been around everything and he's been around good coaches, not forget that, then he knows the right things to say to the right person at the right time. Well, uh, aside from this show, which is incredible, t tonight's main event, brilliant, brilliant fight, there are some incredible fights coming up here on The Zone. Hey, champ, I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weeds. And you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comeback, the non-stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. What a big fight. Keep coming here on the zone. Next week, Peter McGraw looks to bounce back from defeat last time out when he faces Mark Leach in Liverpool. Then at the end of April, former unified champion Jose Ramirez takes on Thomas Delorme in a card featuring Virgil Ortiz, the beast. On May the 11th, Rocky Hernandez takes on Daniel Lugo. And later in May, a classic rivalry fight from Manchester as Josh Taylor finally rematches against Jack Cattrall after their controversial first fight in 2022. Well, it's not a bad lineup, Barry. Take your pick there. It's unbelievable, isn't it? it, it <laughs> We, we've seen can Eddie. I, can I go to all of them? <laughs> <laughs> we constantly keep I have, I have been trying to get to all of them, so I've got to be honest. But yeah, it's, it's a really, it's a fantastic line, it really is. And now with the signing of, 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 of Blue Tennis, with Jared oh. Ennis, though, like, if I don't get the one of his, rings one of his fights, then, <laughs> yeah. then I'll be dangling I'll, I'll, I'll be dangling I'll, I'll, I'll arm wrestle you for it. I'll, I'll arm wrestle you for it. You're just joking. I'm just right. a bear. You're going to see there's a change. We've got a change of uh, commentator here. Ian Steps, Chef Clark. Chef, how are you? How do I look? You look very well, mate, and you've got some news as well. Yes, sir. May 25th, I claim the British. Nice, nice. You must be pumped, buzzing for that. I'm actually very cool, collected. You know, fight night is when we get excited. All going well? Training going well? Preparations? Was it? Was you shocked at all when you got the, the call? No, because I've prepared for You've it. Been waiting, yeah, I've been you? waiting, yeah. So it was just waiting for the, the original man to say. It's going to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But now it's here. It's exciting times. And um, 
something we knew that was going to happen, so it's just a matter of time, isn't it? And it must be nice being in this environment as well, soaking up some of the atmosphere, knowing that it's not long till it's going to be your turn to, to experience it all again. Yeah, most definitely, because, you know, Ellie's boxing tonight. She's going to claim a title. And, um, yeah, it'll be my turn next. Lovely. Well, yep, Chev out May 25th, but we are ready for our next contest here on Before the Bell. So let's hand back over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues with a special middleweight attraction. Now entering the arena from Cone in Poland, please welcome Mateusz Kowetski. Well, here is Mateusz Kowetski from Poland, 25 years old. Three fights, two wins. Uh, one, one of those wins coming by a stoppage. Lives in Brezno, Poland. Has a bit of amateur background. All in the Polish, Polish sorry, national championships. Reaching the semi-finals. I must say, he's in deep here. The very, very talented, hard-hitting Jimmy Sainz. And now entering the arena, please welcome the undefeated Jimmy Sainz. <laughs> the young former Repton star Jimmy Sainz and I have no doubt his previous opponent Alexandro Avios is probably still nursing a headache after the right hand that he landed in the first round of that contest and it shows the kind of man he is he felt he could have done better but for us watching that ringside and around the world it was punch perfect going on from strength to strength guided by my old coach Tony Sims it certainly is a future star of this middleweight division Jimmy Sainz Ladies and gentlemen, from the AO Arena here in Manchester, England, live on the zone, we are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, Everlast, and Forged Irish Stout. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Fleetwood, scoring A-star referee, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the white trunks with the black lettering. He scaled 11 stone, 7 pounds, 6 ounces. Professional record, two victories, one defeat. He has one win coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Cone in Poland. Please welcome Mateusz Kowetski. Kowetski. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the green and gold. He scaled 11 stone, 8 pounds, 3 ounces. His professional record thus far perfect. Three fights, three victories, all three wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the four-time national champion and the GB Elite Three Nations champion fighting out of Brentwood, Essex, England, Jimmy Saints. Saints. Okay, boys, have a cold break. Take a step back. No punches around the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. Good luck. So fight number three Second here. Out. Number four, the bell. Round one. Jimmy Sainz in the blue corner versus Poland's Matus 
Koweski in the red corner. Like I say, Jimmy Sainz has looked very good in the first few fights he's had as a professional, looking very strong, learning all the time. It was a long time waiting for him to turn pro. Spent a lot of time with Tony Sims in the gym. But time that was valuable. Sparring some very good fighters. Slowly developing into a very, very good professional fighter, Barry. Yeah, I really like it. You know, again, we talk about that, just the patience. You know, he's always looking to get the finish, but he doesn't rush anything. He works behind the jab, does, does all the right things, correct? Works behind the jab, doubles it up, and for that's the shot, with that long right hand. You've been impressed with Jimmy Sainchev? Yeah, I mean, three fights and three magnificent uh, performances, man. And uh, he's come out here today as well, and he's looking very disciplined, working behind the jab. And um, he's causing um, his opponent trouble at the moment. He's got a bit of red in the man and he's already, so yeah, it's looking good. It's going to be an exciting fight. Yeah, well supported as well, Jimmy Sainz from Brentwood, Essex. Very powerful. You can see that evident already, like Chef said, some marking of the face of Kowalski. Oh, right hand really is a dangerous shot for Jimmy Sh uh, Sainz. He turns, he just throws does. it, he punches right through the tag of it, doesn't he? Keeps it nice and long as well. And that's his feet, he doesn't look like a guy, when you first look at him, he doesn't look like he has really great footwork, but you always make sure he adjusts his feet so he gets enough range in that right hand, so he gets you right on the end of it. You know, I mean, the, the right hand's good, but I'm very impressed with his jab. The jab. And he's got a cut over the, the, the opponent's got a cut over his eye. Yeah, it looks so spiteful, always trying to put a dent in his opponents every time he throws a shot. And that right hand has caused the damage to that cut around that left eye, left eye of Koweski. It's the jab, like you said, Jeb, that sets everything up. Doesn't know what's hitting here, Koweski. Looking patient, lovely right to the body from Jimmy Sainz. Does his work very nice. Got a good variation, head, body, you know, different shots, different angles. Yeah, nice little step back, just having a little move. Yeah, we'll get it right, Dave. He's timing it, trying to time that right hand, isn't he? Yeah, Steve Gray asking for the doctor to look. No, I don't. When you think about who Koweski's got in front of him, I can see Steve Gray shaking his head. You know, Koweski's never been stopped. So, you can keep going, your stats on here, Chev. Stat pack, baby! No, he's shaking me a bone, not like a ragdoll. Oh, it does, I tell you what, I've just seen Koweski walk to the neutral corner there, and it doesn't look a good cut at all. It looks horrible, but it is just on the side of that left eye from what I can see. But I don't think we're going to see too much more of this. That jab is so effective. He just hit him with the jab, and he, he, Koweski kind of covered it, covered it back. It's such a beautiful jab, so effective. Yeah, it sets everything up. Just missing with that right hand a couple of times, but you can see the power. I think I can feel the, the whisk of air coming past us here at ringside. Just the little small adjustments he makes with the feet there, saying just to make you miss. So Koweski doesn't come forward, and he just edges back, just not even a quarter step. It's just enough to make Koweski just second guess his attack. Corners, ten have a look seconds. At how this cut opened up. Oh, it was a clash of heads. It wasn't the right hand. Seconds out. Round two. Yeah, heads coming together. Accidental head clash. And it doesn't look good for Kowalski. And, and the issue for the pole is he's a novice. Only three fights. So he doesn't really have the experience to know how to, to look after himself here, survive and, and cover up 
But it'd be interesting to know what the referee, if he if he deems it as a clash ahead, then it becomes a no contest if it gets stopped with inside four rounds. A good shot there from Sainz. Good variation as well. The right hand over the top, the left to the body chef. He he just started the second round how he finished the first. It's beautiful, the variation, the power, the angles. It's beautiful boxing. I wonder if this is filtered back to Jimmy, what you've just said there, Barry, about the potential of the, this becoming a no contest. It's really come out here, all guns blazing, Jimmy. You felt that one to the body there. Even though it's not staying in the record, you don't want it in the record, do you? You want, you want a conclusive finish, of course. Again, there's a little touch in the distance, a little lean back. That left to the body. He suffocates you with pressure, doesn't he? he? Does, he really but, but, does. But from a distance. That's a, that's a very good skill. Yeah. Not a lot of people can do that. So. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Skillful in many ways, you, Barry. But as is Jimmy Sainz here on the front foot. Looking very aggressive. That left to the body. The one previous was a little low, but really, really looking spiteful, aggressive here. Koweski does not know what has hit him here. He is being bullied, punched from pillar to post here. Trying to throw the left hook there, protected it well. Jimmy Sainz, right hand higher. Yeah, and then you've got to start thinking, you know, with that cut, you know, and, he, and he's getting systematically beat up here. What are you saving him for? You no, know, you know, what are you keeping him in there for? Oh, there's the feet, Barry. We talk about it all the time. Oh. It's the second low one. That was solo. It was almost. It almost wasn't dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but just before that low blow. Just a half a step back from Jimmy Sainz. He landed a beautiful right hand over the top. Well, he's got a gash over his left eye. He's just been hit low. It's not looking good for Kowalski. It, it, it really ain't at the moment. Yeah, rightfully taking his time. But again, Sainz hasn't rushed any of his work. He hasn't... He hasn't had that adrenaline you know, rush with each other, like they've just do too much and smothered his, his work. He's, he's maintained that distance, we're going that long jab, trying to get that right, that right hand in the range. If he's too close, he takes a step back to, to adjust it for, the, for his distance of reach. Composure is, is the word we're looking for, and he has it. Yeah, there's a nick under the right eye as well of Koweski. Credit to the pole, he's trying to hold the centre ring, trying to let his hands go, but again, Jimmy Sainz is poking out the jab, look, he's looking for the counter, moving his head, patience, ah, oh, beautiful shot again, ramrod jab. Yeah, so he deserved that course, he tried to be showboating, he looked in the other direction, trying to be a, like, you know, that's what he's trying to do, The Sainz, is, he, he's lasered in, that's never going to work. No, nah, he comes square on, didn't he? And you know what else I like about him? His defence is always correct. Whenever he throws that jab, the right hand is always there to cover. Yeah, yeah. The variation as well with the shots from Jimmy Sainz. So impressive. Hooks to, to head and body, the straight right to the body. Fainting as well. I love that from young fighters looking to, to find the openings. But another very hurtful, impressive round from Jimmy Sainz. Corners, 10 seconds. Yeah, it's been lovely boxing from Jimmy Sane, spiteful. Seconds been out, aggressive, round three. Inaccurate, very, very hurtful. Well, into round three we go. We have to give Kowalski from Poland some credit here. It's a bad cut it's around that left eye of the pole. He's trying, he's surviving. Thanks, 
the, the way uh, Jimmy's going about his work is so methodical. His head, his body, you know, and he's moving his he's moving his opponent around. It, it, it's beautiful, and it, you know what? He debuted on the 30th of September last year when I when I fought on the same bill, and he just come on leaps and bounds. I, I think it's brilliant. You're, you're thinking yourself. Here. Yeah. Any any chance to talk yeah, about yourself, Chef? <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> you got your time on May 25th, Chef. But I mean, this is good work from Jimmy Sainz. Again, that variation head and body training in the hooks. Quite his back though, Quash. He's been doing it all the time. Jab again, looking at that right around the body, just following Koweski around the ring a little bit. Jimmy Sainz could just bring that right foot across exactly what he's just done there. That's better, and that helps him find the target for that right hand of his. But this is at this point, you have to wonder what the, the yeah. corner are seeing. This is know, big pressure look after them, man. Um, Heavy pressure from Jimmy Sainz. If he throws like three, when he gets him on the road, he throws three or four straight long shots and then dips down to the body. Just rally him to the head there, so he puts all that focus up to, up to, the, up to, up to the cranium there, and then the elbows will lift, and then just take that little dip and whack. Yeah, that jab. He's got to be, look, if he's going to let his hands go, Koweski, he's got to be selected. He can't be greedy. Oh, the Ooh. left. There was a wince there. He just sort of buckled over a little bit. The right hand, I think someone's got to have a look here, whether it be the ref or the corner for Koweski, because this is just... A beat down, a one sided beat down right now. Right to the body, left hook from Jimmy Sainz. Took it well there, he did. Was right, on the, right on the button, that left hook. There's no question in his toughness, that's, that's for sure. But this is target practice now for Jimmy Sainz. And it's still impressive. It's, it's impressive because he's not trying to rush the work. You know, he, he sees his man's injured and he's just picking and kind of using, ex gaining experience while, while picking his man apart. Shots back having no effect. And Jimmy Sainz, he just tucks up well, nice high guard. Just sits inside the pocket, looking for that counter left or right. Lovely double jab, dropping the left to the body. Good work with that. Lead handed. Jimmy Sainz. Be interested to see what the corner does. And Koweski. Here, look at a jumbo. Have a look at that cut. Can't quite see it at the minute, but doesn't look a good cut. But nice and calm in the corner of Jimmy Sainz, Mark Seltzer, Tony Sims. Had both of these in my corner all through my my career. And oh, me, 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 me. Well, I just feel left out. Feel left out. I wanted to, to mention. The two great men, always a calm corner. Precise, clear instructions, exactly what you want from your, your coach. Corners, 10 seconds. You know what I like about it as well? He's not breathing all out of, out of gas. He's very calm with his controlled breathing. Second the out, from round four. I'm almost surprised that we're in the fourth round here of this sixth rounder at the OA. Uh, AO Arena here in Manchester. Jimmy Sainz he looks hurtful, he looks strong, aggressive. We've seen lots of very good variation with the shots. He's been a good control display, I think, like yeah. a professional display, to be honest. He had, like, maybe he could have gone more early and took more risks. But, you know, he, he hasn't needed to. I think he's methodical, impressive, and he's boxed within himself and he's dictating the pace, and that's why Chevy wasn't breathing, in the, wasn't breathing heavy in the corner because he's only committing when he wants to. He's not forced to do anything that he's not comfortable with. Well, on the flip side as well, Koweski in the, the red corner, we have to give him tons of credit here. I have to say, very inexperienced, only three fights. But he's shown real toughness and bravery. Good head movement there, just dipping the knees, rolling under the shots of Koweski. Jimmy Sainz. I think it's a left uppercut there for Jimmy Sainz. He goes out of the pocket, I think he's going right through the middle. Ooh, oh, nice body he's, shot. he's starting to wilt here, Koweski. The referee's having a look. Steve Gray. Can you be too brave for your own good? I think we're, we're seeing Ooh, seeing not, that not, now. Not on, not on this table, Chef. You've got to move on, son. Keep on target. 
good work again with that left to the body from Jimmy Sainz. He's trying to hold the arm of Jimmy Sainz Koweski to stop that work, but was unsuccessful with it. Nice high guard, just taking that right hand on the left glove. But, but I think if Sainz pins him on the rope, he's picking the shots really well, no criticism at all. If he pins him on the rope now and sustains the pressure with long shots, the referee steps in. Yeah, just doesn't want to smother his work. And then let a barrage go here. Again, working that left to the body nicely. Just over a minute to go in this fourth round. I think he's enjoying, you know, picking them apart and punishing him. That left again to the body and a rival of Jimmy Sainz in the amateur, Stephen Clark from Liverpool, who's on the bill. Jimmy lost to him in the National Elite Finals then. Knocked out Stephen Clark. I think it was a couple of months later, or even a month later. So that could be a rivalry brewing in this division later on. But good pressure from Jimmy Sainz. The referee's having a look. Tongue comes out of Koweski. showing again how tough and brave he is. And, to, and had, enough, had enough about him to turn Sainz there and just, uh, just throw the attack for a second. I've got a feeling there's going to be another phase here from... Oh, big right hand. And the referee jumps in, saves Koweski. A brutal, hurtful display from the former Repton star, Jimmy Sainz. Another impressive victory for the young man from Brentwood. Yeah, I think it was very impressive. I think, you know, again, he boxed within himself, and that, that's impressive, that. He boxed within himself. Didn't rush anything, took his time, methodically, you know, beat Kowalski up. And, and in the end, the referee, the referee was looking for the moment to stop it. I don't think he picked the perfect moment, but he was looking for the moment to stop it. And once he took a big right hand there, he thought, that's enough for me. Impressive. Yeah. What's that? Three fights? Four now. Four now. He, he didn't rush it at all. He just did his thing. And um, you know what? Beautiful, beautiful um, combination. He picked his part. He picked his man apart. And uh, he got his win here. Look at that. So, again, I just think the technique's flawless. And it, when you when you put that moment on its own, you go, why did he stop it? He's on his feet. And I, and I understand. I, will, I would understand the criticism of that. But he took a sustained beating. So he really did. I mean, and I thought the corner should have been a little bit brave on his part and so maybe say, listen, we're saving for another day here. Yeah. Because yeah? you, you are brave, you are taking the shot, but you're just taking the shot, you're not doing nothing else. Just showing how brave you are. That was a good performance for the there. Again, ever improving, ever impressing. It showed us everything. It really was another solid display. Great team behind him, well supported. And that's only going to grow with the way he's performing the excitement that he's bringing every time he enters the ring. Definitely, that jab, I, I can't get over that jab. I, I love that jab. Well, they say it would take you around the world, Barry. Hang on, you got a really high voice for a big fella. I, I just noticed that. Well, hey, but what's he saying, mate? There you go, there what's you go. Well, I'm a little guy, I should have, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, Barry. <laughs> well, oh, he's shaking me, it's hurting, by the way, this is. <laughs> Well, both fighters, along with the referee and our MC, are in the centre of the ring. So let's hand over to Mr. David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Gray calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 2 minutes, 47 seconds of round number 4. Declaring your winner by TKO, he's still undefeated. Jimmy Sainz. Yep, another very impressive victory from the young man. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to please Jimmy have Sainz. a nice round of applause for Marius Kowetsky. Kowetsky is getting a round of applause, rightly so, from the crowd here in Manchester. Tough as nows after suffering a terrible cut in the opening round. But been very impressed with Jimmy Sainz. Punching so hard improving all the time so much to work with so much natural talent very good pedigree there like i say I former star from my old club just to reference myself again parry the old repton amateur boxing club the green and gold that jimmy sainz is still wearing with pride half a smile there should be a full smile after that performance so exciting he's making his way to ringside to have a word with our reporter jamie ward Promoter Eddie Ham is also there, along with Tony Sims. So let's hand over to Jamie to hear from the victor now. Well, Jimmy Sainz, 
Congratulations. After victory in Vegas, you were a little bit critical of your performance. Not that you at all needed to be. How would you sum that one up in comparison tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good, pretty good overall performance. I mean, I was loading up a little bit. Uh, I could see it was, uh, I was earning him all the time to the body and to the head. Maybe looking a little bit too keen for that one shot knockout. But as soon as I got back onto the jab, uh, yeah, it was all good from there, yeah. To keep the record going, I talked to you about that in the build-up. You said, I'm not going to go looking for the knockout, but four fights, four knockouts now, that's 100%. That must bring a smile to your face. Yeah, I mean, I don't really mean to go looking for the knockout, but I see he was hurt. A few of the body shots, he, he was stepping back, wincing a little bit. Uh, tried to step up the gas, but the stoppage weren't there. I didn't try to force it, so I was turning his tennis, get back on the jab, get back on the double jab, and work the body. And then in the end, he's a very tough man. Uh, a lot of respect for him. He stayed in there when he didn't really have to. He had two cuts on his face, but a very tough man, and it was a good fight. And that's Las Vegas and Manchester this year. What are you enjoying about life as a professional boxer so far, Jimmy Sainz? I'm just really grateful to Eddie and Tony keeping me active. Uh, fights like this, like tonight, I've got a tough opponent in front of me. It's only going to put me in good stead for the future. So just thank you for my team all around me, keeping me active. Yeah. Well, before we go to Eddie, grab a quick word with trainer Tony Sims. Tony, you've worked with so many brilliant young fighters in your time in boxing. What excites you about the potential of Jimmy Sainz? Yeah, like, as we know, he's a good amateur and uh, he's, he's just um, now turning into, a, you know, getting in the pro game and... Uh, He's, uh, it's about taking your time, getting the rounds under your belt, which he ain't done so far, but that was his scheduled first six rounder. It's just about being patient, especially with kids like that who are tough. So, yeah, he's just learning all the time. He's learning in the gym, so he's coming on well. Promote really, Hearn. I know you always get a little bit excited when you're representing these young fighters, especially when they're from Essex. But what makes you smile when you, you think about the potential of Jimmy Sainz as well? Just starting to develop now. You know, we, everyone knows about his power. He's, he's had that since the amateurs. Four wins, four knockouts is no surprise. But it's just the way that he's going through the gears. That guy was really tough. And it was the engine, really, and, and the, the fitness that he had that allowed him to throw that amount of punches. So good experience. Got some good rounds in tonight, good solid rounds. Got hit a little bit, which is OK at times. Tony will want to tidy that up. But you know, when you're letting your hands go like that, that's what people want to see. Get, get him out there when you're a level above. And you know, a good crew on the road here tonight supporting him. I'd like to see him fight in London or, or back home you know, soon, because obviously the experience is incredible. Everywhere he's been has been amazing, and Vegas included in here, but he's going to do a lot of tickets back home, obviously debuted back there uh, what seems like a long time ago now, but hasn't boxed at, back home for a long time. So hopefully do that in the summer, keep nice and active. I guess one or two more sixes before he moves to eights, and you'll see the knockout streak continue. Jimmy, final one from you. Eddie mentioned the crew have made the, the trip north here to Manchester from Essex. Do you have a little message of thanks you want to leave for them tonight? Yeah, big thank you to everyone who's come out. I think it's around 100 people from Essex and London. Big thanks. And hopefully we can make it happen in London, hopefully in the summer. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks to everyone on Macho and thanks to everyone on the team. It means a lot. Jimmy Sainz, congratulations. Good performance. Well done. Yep, Jimmy Sainz goes to 4-0, and this is what we have on the main card live at 7pm. Michael Gomez Jr. versus Kane Baker for an English Super Featherweight title. Jordan Flynn in a tick-over fight. We've got Rian Dixon in with Karen Carbohal for the WBO lightweight title. Then Ellie Scottney against Lefebvre. For the IBF and WBO and Ring Magazine Super Middleweight. The Super Bantamweight titles and then the middleweight division Steve Clark versus Jensen Irwin and then tonight's main event Jordan Gill versus Selfa Barrett what a fight that promises to be but we have one more here on before the bell so let's hand over to your MC for the final time on before the bell Mr David Diamante Ladies and gentlemen from Manchester, England, live on DAZN, we're now set to go with a special six-round super flyweight attraction. Now entering the arena from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, please welcome Abdul Kesi Ngaoma. Well, here is Abdul Kesi Ngaoma. 25 from Tanzania. She had seven wins, five losses, the one draw. Of the seven wins, six have been by stoppage. And he's only been stopped once. And that was to Kobe McNamara. It was last month. He was stopped in the final round. His game, he's rugged, he's tough. 
But if you know much about Jack Turner, you'll know that he's in very, very deep here. And now entering the arena, please welcome the young undefeated Liverpudlian L Terrier, Jack Turner. Well, nicknamed El Terrier, Jack Turner. And if you know much about this young man, you'll know why. He made his debut in May last year in Dubai, stopping Farhad Mivul in the first. He was back out two months later, again in Dubai, and again a first round stoppage. He was back in his home city of Liverpool, facing Adam Yahoo on the Jack Catchall Jorge Linares card. He won in the first round. Brian Lopez was victim number four. Two minutes, 30 seconds. That one lasted another first round victory. And in his last fight, yes, you guess, lasted less than a minute. This man does not go the distance. He doesn't even go to the second round. So I've said this time and time again. When you're watching Jack Turner, do not blink. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the action continues from Manchester, England, live on the zone with a six-round super flyweight attraction being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. This bout is sponsored by Betfred, stage front, everlast, and forged Irish stout. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Liverpool, scoring A-star referee, Mr. Mark Lyson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the super flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the white and black trunks. He scaled eight stone, four pounds, one ounce. Professional record, seven victories, five defeats, one draw, with six of his seven wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Please welcome Abdul Kesi Ngaoma. Ngaoma. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the white trunks with the silver trim. He scaled eight stone, five pounds, six ounces. Professional record, perfect. Five fights, five victories, all five victories coming by way of knockout. Here is the three-time national champion fighting out of Liverpool, El Terrier, Jack Turner. Turner. Okay, boys, both know the rules. What you to obey my commands. Tell you to break, break clean, defend yourselves at all times, boys. Okay, good luck to you both. Seconds out, round one. First round here. Final fight. On before the bell, Jack Turner and Gaoma. Six rounder. I'll be very, very surprised if this goes the distance. Jack Turner, like I mentioned in the ring walk. Oh, five fights, five wins, five stoppages. All in the first Four, round, and there's a right hand two, from Jack Turner. Drops and Gaoma. Five, six, huge seven, power. Eight. Just commits to every single shot. And we've seen it so early here already in this contest. 
So he turns his that right hand, it's unbelievable. Look at it. He, he lifts that elbow, he acts the punch over. The referee's got to stop this now if he doesn't go down. He is all over him like a rash head, body. Ngooma does not know what's hit him. He would have known about the reputation of Jack Turner going into this fight, but until you get in there, you cannot understand that power from Jack Turner. Oh, left hook four, again, drops and goes. Two, what a three, shot four, from the young five, Liverpudlian. Six, He's on seven, unsteady legs. Eight. Referee, no, he's waved it off. Another first round stoppage from Jack Turner. Chef Clark, talk to me about that finish. Wow, J just wow. I, I... <laughs> he speaks not... this. He speaks this, Barry. <laughs> Well then, you're you one, you one time to talk on a Jack Turner fight because you, know, you don't get a chance to say anything and it's over so quick and you fluffed it. I, I, what, was, what, was, what was... I'm on the right course, it's like shaving down cruiserweight. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm, I'm on a booster seat, that's why I feel bigger than I am. Honestly, the, the, the power from every shot, there's power in there. And he's so accurate as well. He's, wow. Even that last little bit there, he, he fainted the right hand to put him on to, to move to move his opponent to, to his right so we can just throw that long left hook. Unbelievable. Let's have a look at the first knockdown from Jack Turner. Oh, the short right hand, wasn't it, Barry? But he lifts the elbow, doesn't he? He punches across with it. So we're going to lift that elbow, but he has to turn the body into it. And that gives him all... That uses all those big muscles in the back of his body then. And that's where he generates all his power from. He obviously has natural power, but he makes sure he, makes, he uses every inch of his body to get into the shot. Look at that. There, there's the feint. See the feint with the right hand? Looks like he's going to throw it. It's the dip. He feint, dip, and then the left hook. What would you know about punching? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is God-given power, that is. I mean, that, that is a gift from God, that, that sort of power. He's thinking about it, isn't he? He reminds me of a Gilawi Afrin. That, that's how... No I'm... nonsense. In your face, trying to take your head off of every shot. He looks tiny and no power, but Gilaw is very strong. And, and this young man here... Wow. I saw his second fight in Dubai. I was ringside for that. And they said, watch this kid. And everyone says that. And, you thought, and he came out, he threw a shot, and he didn't look great. And I thought, well, you know, he looks a little bit what, open for me. And then the next punch he threw, he hit the kid the other side of the ring. And then with that, there like five punches later, the fight was over. And I just went, oh. It's just incredible, incredible display of power. Malinka Omar, he's to his feet. He's with the referee in the centre of the ring. Jack Turner just getting the tape removed from his gloves. He does go to 6-0, and all first-round victory. So let's hand over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Lyson calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 14 seconds of round number one. Declaring your winner by TKO, he's still undefeated, El Terrier, Jack Turner. Yep, 6-0, six, oh, six first round victories for Jack Turner. A very, very exciting young talent from Liverpool. Speaking to Joe McNally, his coach, saying, look, he, this boy can fight, he can really box. And let me tell you now, he's the next star. Once Marcel Braithwaite, Sonny Edwards move on. He's the next man to reign in this division. And with power like that and with the boxing ability that they speak about that we've yet to see, the, fight, uh, the future, sorry, looks very, very bright for the young man. I mean, it is so impressive every single time he fights. It's just pure excitement. It really is. Tony Bellew next to us. I'm sure he's been impressed with the young Scouser who makes his way down to ringside to speak to promoter Eddie Hearn. Joe McNally's there as well. But let's hear from the victor who's alongside our reporter, Jamie Ward. Yeah. Jack Turner, congratulations. Six fights, six and oh, six first round knockouts. That's just about as good as it gets. Uh, you've got a little wry smile on your face there. Just tell us what's going through your mind just at this moment in time. Yeah, um, I'm happy I've been working on a few things in the gym and it's just um, showed off then. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good and 
I'm, I'm going to run through this division, as I said again, step by step. Talk us through the finish, because you had him hurt, he got up, and then it was a brilliant left hand to close the show as well. Because it's not just raw power, it's the way you're setting these shots up as well, Jack, that's so impressive. Just talk us through the final moments. Yeah, it was just, um, just boxing, just trying to pick my shots and caught him with, um, I caught him with a nice left hook. And, yeah, caught him good. And it's nice that you're composed about it, because I can tell you people are going to start getting very excited about you, especially Mr Tony Bellew. He's already saying that you're the future of boxing in Liverpool. What is the mindset for you every time you head in to a fight, or at any level? What is the mindset when that opening bell rings? Well, obviously, I believe in myself. I believe that I'm the best. And I believe I'm going to win. And that's it, really. Well, let's bring in Joe McNally. Uh, Joe, I was down the gym last week, and... You were talking about Jack and how he's been looking in the gym and you said, listen, I've half told him to take his time a bit in this one coming up. And he replied in one line on WhatsApp saying, not a chance, I'm winning this fight by knockout. How real is the power? His power is a God gift. It's been given to him. But what you're not seeing yet is what he does in the gym. He's a fantastic talent. There's nothing he can do, Jamie. I really believe he's the one to take over this super flyweight division. He can box, he can fight on the inside, his defensive, his defensive work's brilliant, and most of all his IQ. He's just blessed with this power that when he touches them, they stay hit, and you can't teach killer instinct. He catches you and hurts you, it's game over, you're out of there. I'm really excited for this kid, he's a magnificent talent, and his attitude's fantastic too. Jack's saying he's going to run through this division when he gets the opportunity. This would also be a question for Eddie Hearn, but for you as a training team, what do you do now in terms of opponents when he's winning fights like this and six on the bounce too? Yeah, well, you know, this kid, he's four kids with fantastic records his last two fights. You know, these are journeymen that are coming to lie down and the emphasis is to get rounds. Very difficult with them small gloves on with this man, but... As long as he's doing it in the gym, which he is, he spars 10, 12 rounds, showcasing every aspect of his ability. I'm happy with that. You know, if he's getting results like that, relaxing, you know, believe it or not, that was taking his time. Um, he does it in the gym, I'm happy, and he gets in and puts them performances in. I truly believe that, you know, in this country, you've got Liverpool's own Marcel Breitweight, Sonny Edwards, they'll be pushing on, and this man will be here to take every aspect, every title pick them all up and run away with the game. Well, let's bring in promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, sometimes at the press conferences and you'll go into the changing room before fights and you'll say, look, go out there and excite. This is your opportunity. Safe to say, I think, that Jack Turner's maybe getting that message. Yeah, I'm glad he took his time tonight, apparently. You know, that's uh, <laughs> six men that have got in the ring with him, six men that have failed to hear the bell for the end of the first round. Um, that's getting very exciting. And the problem now is trying to get those rounds. I mean, that was a guy who, you know, we were told should give Jack some rounds. And, you know, Joe's right, he's got this freakish power. You know, you might not think that to, to look at him necessarily, but I think that's part of his gift. You know, and, and Tony and, and Joe believe that he's the next big star to come out of the city. It's right there for him. They're crying out for a new star, you know, to go and win domestic titles, European titles and world titles. Look at the division. I mean, you know, these smaller guys are so lucky now. Obviously, you've got Sonny, you've got, you know, Galau, you've got Bam, you've got Estrada, you've got Chocolatito, you've got so many mega fights in time to come. But I really think he should be moving now close towards English title level. There isn't a lot of liquidity in the division for guys to try and get rounds from. The problem is you're going to start going into eight and ten round fights having not got out of the first round. So it's the balance of bringing him through at the right pace, but also not holding him back because you might find he can walk for everyone domestically and at European level. And that's really exciting. So timing, you know, and, and Joe will lead that shit, but very, very exciting. Anyone that's got power like that is going to just entertain fight fans all around the world. And uh, if he can refine his boxing skills, which we believe from Joe he has, he's going to be a real threat and a big star of British boxing. Jack, you were nodding along in agreement with Eddie Hearn there. Titles by the end of the year, is that the aim for you? Um, well, that's up to me coaching, up to me manager and team. So whatever they think I do. Just finally, do you have a little message you want to leave for your, for your support, big support here in Manchester once again? Yeah, I want to thank all, I want to thank all my fans for coming out and everyone who bought the ticket. Appreciate it and I can't wait for the next one. Jack Turner, congratulations, 6-0, six first round knockouts. I think we can start getting a little bit excited, don't you? Well, 
So impressive from Jack Turner once again. That left hook to finish was an absolute peach, like Joe McNally said. And as we said in commentary, that's a God-given gift. Power. Like you can only imagine, you can only dream of. And we have former world champion from Liverpool, Tony Bellew stood behind us. And Tony, look, from your city, Liverpool, how impressed have you been with Jack Turner? And do you really, truly believe he can be the next star for your son? 100%, this is the next star of North West Boxing. This kid will be, I think this will be the first light flyway flyway you will see star filling arenas. People talking about him. He's just such a prolific puncher. But you're not seeing his, excuse me, his boxing ability yet. Have what? you seen it, Tone? I've seen it yeah. in the gym and the kid's quality. I love his balance, you know, offense and defense. Don't get me wrong, he heavily leaves the offense more, obviously, but his defense is really good. He's slick, but you're not seeing that yet. All that you're seeing is the raw power. Six fights, six first round knockouts. Has. When was the last time we've seen a prospect do that? Naz. Won, won all first rounds, but yeah, I like uh, Nance was a flyweight when he turned pro and he was knocking people on cold. I, I knew it was Nance, but I didn't want to say it. I'm, I'm happy, Baz did. But I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to put names about like that related to his name at this kind of, at this time now. Too much pressure, but believe me, he's going to light up arenas. What, what would you do with him, Tony? Like, how do you match him now? So you have to get him a durable man. So Andy Lee just told me ringside then, he says to me, I've heard you've been talking about him. I said, yeah, he said, Tone, I've seen that opponent on the Irish circuit a few times, whether it's sparring and fighting, and he's a really good survivor. Well, look what he's just done to a really good survivor. Took him apart. And to be fair, I looked at the opponent at the start of the fight, and I said, Jack, touch him down the stairs, because I knew the minute he touched him upstairs, the kid was going to get the fright of his life. And he got it. His eyes literally opened and double the size. Once a right hook touched him on the back of the head. And it was just a right one was on the wall. But for someone like Jack now, he needs round. Yes, he's getting them in the gym. Joseph McNally, Declan O'Rourke, brilliant young coaches come through the game. But at this moment in time, they're drilling them in the gym. They're giving them rounds with... He's been doing that to Sonny Edwards. Yeah. Sonny's a, a fantastic, brilliant former world champion. Multiple guys, Marcel Braithwaite does a lot of rounds yeah. with him. So, I don't want to say, you know, English and like, that's just... Let's, let's get him past the first round. Yeah. Let's get him past the first round in a couple of fights. Then let's get him doing a full eight. And then let's look at a couple of titles. But for now, enjoy the knockouts. Nice one, Tony. Thank Thanks you very boys. much. You can catch Tony on the main broadcast uh, live at 7 p.m. But I mean, Chev, I want to ask you about Jack Turner. That was super impressive. I mean, his career up until now has been super impressive. What would you like to see him do next? You know, um, as Tony said, uh, you know, try and get in past the first round. <laughs> and, and that's it. You just got to take it one step at a time because there's going to be a point where you're fighting somebody that's going to take you the distance, you know, and you, you want to be able to endure that. And look at that. I, I'm, I, I'm guessing you are as well, Barry, desperate to see this boxing ability that I keep hearing of. We're not going to see if he keeps doing that. I, I, I would say the thing in this division, he's going to move very quickly because they do, because you run out of opponents. So, you know, you just got to match him with the opponents that should give him rounds. If they don't give him rounds, then you just got to move him on and move him on. And, and there's always a risk attached to that. But when you have that sort of power, you're, you're always never, you're, you're always at the potential of finishing the fight at any stage. So, you know, he might be attracted to deep waters at some point. But as long as he's training, right? You know, you have to. I mean, he won't have, he won't have the luxury that the fighters have. He has power like that. That's don't feel sorry for him for that. That's a gift. But at some point, he, he's gonna go the distance, like Nas did. The goal fight, big punches did. In the end, someone takes him the distance. How they react to that is is how, how we find out whether they're gonna be stars or not. Yeah. Look, I guess it's always been the bigger divisions that have always packed out the huge arenas, etc. Major majority of the time, but it doesn't matter what weight you are, what size you are, when you're dispatching a people like that, there's no doubt that he's going to pack out the Echo Arena in Liverpool. Yeah, this, I, I would say, <laughs> I lose my job now, there's a seed, for, for small guys, there's a seed for what you can do. Uh, once you go outside the sport, like heavyweights can transcend not just boxing, but sport itself. So there's a limit to what you can do, unless you have something else. If he has crazy power, you can sell that but he's going to need that X factor of, of something else, whether he's 
You know, like Naz had that crazy personality, that arrogance, the willingness to not care. You know, like Eubank had that. You know, ben had the crazy, you know, raw aggression that Nigel Ben I'm talking about now. You know, that, that angry man syndrome where you know, everyone wants to see him either demolish people or get beat. You, know, that you, you have to have that, or you have to have a rival. A dance partner, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, for the smaller guys, it takes a lot of other things to do that. But he brings the excitement that bigger cup fellas bring. Everyone loves a knockout, and he brings that. He's, he's so explosive, man. And you know what I like most about it? He come, come there for the, the post-fight interview, and he's just like, and what? But it's, this is what I do, and I love that. I love that as well. I love that. I love that. You know, there's, he's just being himself. Literally. There, there's no ego there. I guess there is an ego to an extent, but he's not trying to be someone he's not, and I like that. It, it's raw, and, it, and, it, and he looks the part. He looks dangerous when he's in there. He's like, I've just done it. Okay, next one. Let's go. <laughs> next. <laughs> right, so uh, uh, a really good fight coming up on the card. Um, we have some arrivals, I believe. Jordan Flynn was hoping to be in there this evening against Cameron Vong. That is a real grudge match that we have, but he has a tick over fight against Tempella Maharusi. Rounds very, very important for Jordan Flynn with a big, big domestic fight coming up. That's a fight we can't wait for, Barry. Yeah, it is. So it's important for him now just, you know, just to get the rounds. The training camp didn't go to waste. Gets a little bit of a little bit of rounds under his belt and then gets back into the into the gym for the bigger fight. Yeah, that is a big fight. And we have huge fights here on the zone. We have great fights with Amazon, no doubt. We need a fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on the zone worldwide, April 20th. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia. Lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one counts. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can find me. Well, lots of big time action coming your way on the zone on Saturday, April 20th. A super fight from America as Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia battle to settle a personal score. And Haney's super lightweight world title. And after the drama of the delay because of the cut to Tyson Fury, inspiring a new date is now set for the undisputed heavyweight clash between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Live on the zone from Saudi Arabia on May 18th. What a schedule that is. Three massive fights. I want to pick your brains on the three of them there. Give me a winner for those. Haney Garcia first. I can't see anything but a Haney win. So, I, I mean, Garcia has that power where he can, he can cause anyone problems, but the discipline in Haney's work, I, he won't make a mistake. Same. Chev? Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. Right, Haney's first now, Canelo Munguia. Canelo. Barry? Yeah. Can Ooh, I, there was a delay. Yeah, there was. There was because I'm not sure the energy in, in Munguia's work and it, it, coming off his best performance. I'm not quite sure if Canelo still has that same energy. But you have to until you've seen it. Until you've seen it massively win, you have to still make Canelo a favourite. And then the history-making heavyweight fight: Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury, the first undisputed champ in the four-belt era. Chev, talk to me. Who wins that one? I'm going. I'm gonna go for Usyk here. I'm gonna go for Usyk. I just think the the experience, the the from from the amateurs all the way through, and you haven't really seen him made any mistakes. He's a southpaw also. You don't think the the, the good big one beats the good little one in this occasion? Listen, the bigger you are, the bigger you are, the more you have to carry around. And Tyson Fury is very good at it, but Usyk is super at what he does. I can see Barry in deep thought there, just. <laughs> having a think before he gives his verdict. It's very similar to the Munguia, no, different levels, the Munguia and Canelo fight, it's, it's what Fury has left. 
Fury at his best, I think, still beats Usyk at his best. I would say that. But we haven't seen Fury at his best since February 2020. The second Wilder fight. That's when he was at his best. He was brilliant that night. And since then, the third fight was a better fight, but better fight to watch, but not a better performance for him. So, and ever since then, he's just done enough. So I'm not quite sure what if he's he's on form, then I pick him. But it's a really hard fight. And also, he's not the fighter who moves wrong like he used to. He's more flat-footed, more aggressive. That might be better for him, but I'm not quite sure if it is because Usyk wants you. To, Usyk likes to work off your work. But let's not forget about tonight's main event, Chev. Jordan Gill versus Alpha Barrett. What a domestic fight this, because the loser here, where do they go? Really derails their progress. The winner goes on to big things. Potential world title shot. We're hearing from Eddie Hearn. We don't know. How do you see that one going, Chev? This one's hard. Um, but I'm edging towards Zelfa. I, I just think, you know, um, where he's a bit, he's a bit faster... You know, he's a bit slick. Um, but Jordan's tough, and and the and power's looks good here at the way. He, he does, and the power is there. We've seen, we've seen it. You know, so. Um, but I just think that the speed, and I've we've seen um, Zelfa move and box, and I just wonder if Jordan has the the footwork to to keep up with him. What do you take from the way in anything, Barry? No, I don't. I know he's. I know he looks tight for the weight, Zelfa Barry, but he's a career for super featherweight, and and Jordan Gill's not. So he's had a bit more luxury for the weight. He's built into the weight, of course. And, and I think, you know, he's had a real turn in his career. I, I would say that. But I make Zelfa a big favourite. I don't, I, I really do. I think it's his fight to lose. I would say that. Method of victory? I think, I think he might get the stoppage. I think he has to go out quick and without taking silly risks, quick, be aggressive and try and catch Gil cold. I think try and get it, get it, try and whip, that whipping uppercut and that whipping left hook that he has, Zelfa Barrett. I think if he can catch Jordan Gill with that, I'm not sure if he can recover. What a main event that is. Real domestic dust up. Jordan Gill versus Zelfa Barrett is live at 7 pm here on the zone. Do not miss it. Heading into the Conor fight in December, it was just laughable because everybody tipped him. I knew how good I am. I knew what I'm capable of. I know that I had to upset people. I knew I had to have something to prove. You know, I proved people wrong, and it was more pleasurable for me to do that. I rocked him heavy in, in the first round, dropped him in the second. Showing any gunshots oh, at this stage. Oh, left hand, brilliant left shot from Jordan Gill. That was a plan. It worked to treat. He's Michael's hurt again. Punch on the back of the head, goes to the body, hooks up, goes to stop it. Oh, from Jordan Gill. And the referee steps in. Beating Conlon in his in his hometown, the doom. A world of good for his for his mindset, for his confidence. He feel like he's overcoming it. It's made him stronger, of course. But I'm not Conlon. Don't matter if you beat King Kong, man. I, I believe I'm gonna win. April 3rd.